Hi, welcome to another edition of the Mainframe here on uh, WGRA.net and BlauTet.com. We appreciate you watching these uh, informative videos. And today, we're going to talk about something that uh, pretty much uh, terrorizes people almost as much as swimming in the ocean with <laughs> sharks. And that is what happens if these two things right here fall apart, melt down, stop working. And this, if you've never seen one of these, this is the hard drive out of a desktop. Right. That's what it looks like. This is the hard drive out of a laptop. Right. It's a little tiny thing, and it's, and it's actually a mechanical device that stores all your data on magnetic little round discs that look kind of like CDs that turn around and around and around real fast. So these are mechanical and they fail. And when they do, people typically um, fail right along with them because That's right. they've got stuff on there that they just have no other copies of. They have no idea how to get it back. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how to prevent that from happening. Not necessarily the failing the hard drive because it, this is an inevitable, right? Absolutely. I mean, this device is going to fail no matter what you yeah. do. Yeah. So what you can do to make sure that if this does fail and when it does fail that you're ready for it. So today Paul we're going to talk a little bit about uh, backups and, and then disaster recovery. Uh, first, what exactly do you mean by backup? When, when we say let's back up the computers, are we backing up every single thing that's on this hard drive? Well, and it depends. Um, Ideally, in a perfect world, yes, you back up everything. All your programs, all of your data, all of your operating system, uh, all of that. Uh, and you do that for convenience sake. Now, it's true that I can reload the operating system pretty quickly. Uh, and then I can even go and find my original disks or download new programs um, and get that uh, done. But it all takes time. And sometimes it could take even one or two yeah. days, uh, depending on how many programs you have to get all of that built back up. And some of those programs you can never get back because you don't have the disk anymore. Right. You throw away the, the license key right. that allows you to even use the program right. that you bought, right? Right. And uh, different software companies have different policies in regards to that. Some of them will retain and keep up with uh, who bought what from them. Others have no idea that you ever bought that from them. And if you call them and tell them, hey, I bought your program, I can't find it any longer, they'll say, well, we'll be glad to sell you another copy <laughs> of that. So backing up, uh, there are some programs that you can do, do it yourself. You guys do it for your clients, sure. or your business clients, which usually have a ton more data than, right. than the guy that just has a laptop at his house. So you can back up all that stuff. Uh, that's not a problem. There's plenty of tools out there. Even Microsoft and Apple provide backup tools within mm -hmm. their own operating system. Right. The problem is a lot of times those are backing up the data onto the, another partition of the hard drive. Sure. So if your original data is on here and your backup is also on here, right. if this fails, you've lost them both. Uh, absolutely. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure that there is multiple points uh, of recovery uh, on different media. And so in, a, in an ideal world, we're going to back up the hard drive, the PC or the server, uh, to another box someplace else in the, in the building. Um, oftentimes we try to you know, separate them geographically uh, as much as we can, so in, in one corner of a building to another, uh, in the event of a fire, a lot of times it'll be localized, and so then that you know we would have access to that data very quickly. But it is also because of fire and tornadoes and things like that, very rare circumstances, but because they they do happen, we need to make sure that the data is always off-site as well. Right. Most people are doing that today with online backup. Uh, programs. There, there's several uh, for home users, there's several for businesses, there's lots of different ways of doing that. Right. But we want to make sure that we have our critical data always kept off-site in a current basis. And even if you don't want to use online backup, because maybe you're scared of the internet um, or you're you know, terrified of the cloud, uh, you can still take uh, and back things up to USB hard drives, back them up to jump drives, things like that, uh, and then take those off-site. You have to have at least three minimum. Uh, one for when you have it physically there at your location, one for transit, and then one that's always off-site. And mm -hmm. you rotate those uh, in, in sequence. And that's the only safe way to do it. A lot of people will just have the one and the uh, backup device and say, oh, well, uh, you know, but I take it off-site at nighttime. Well, what if you had a tornado or a fire yeah. during the daytime and you forget to grab your purse that has that backup in it, and now you've lost your backup and your original at the same right. time. So a lot of times it's not just the fact that this, these devices fail. I actually passed by a business the other day that, that was on fire, right. and the fire trucks are there, and they're spraying it, and the thing basically burned down to the ground. And if they had their backup on site there, then they're, they're out of luck. Right. Unless they, it's online somewhere, it's gone. Yeah, they lost everything. And, and the statistics are, are pretty frightening. They say that uh, businesses in that situation that go through a disaster, whatever it may be, and do not have adequate backup uh, and restore capability, 
there's about a 70 to an 80 percent likelihood that they'll go out of business wow. in the next year. And that's because if you think about what is on that hard drive, uh, and you know, somewhat uh, applies even to individuals, but in businesses in particular, your account's receivable, who, who uh, you owe money to, uh, who owes money to you, uh, your payroll information, right. uh, important employee records, uh, and sometimes there are legal situations that you, you get yourselves into because you don't have access to that information any longer. So you imagine trying to remember everything you've done in the last, you know, since you've been in business yeah. off the top of your head. I can't remember what I did last week, so <laughs> I, I have to have a backup. This thing, this thing right here now, a lot of people, uh, this is cool to show because a lot of people have never seen the actual hard drive that's inside a computer. This is a mechanical device that is going to fail because it's got ball bearings in, mm -hmm. in here right. and it's got little platters in there that, that spin around all the time and it's mm -hmm. amazing how long they last because these things whirl around at 5400 or 7200 uh, rounds per 10, second 10,000 to 15,000 all the time days and years and years and years right. and they continue to work so it's amazing they do but they do fail what is the average life of this so technical lifespan is five years um, um, uh, for those types of devices. Mean time between failure may be a little bit larger. It depends on the grade of the hard drive and, and such as that too. Uh, but you always plan for the fact that it could be tomorrow that right. it's going to fail. So don't just say, oh, well, Paul said it, it was going to be five years, and so I got five years before I need to worry about backups. No, I did not. It's going to be probably the you know very next day that you don't do a backup that, right. that you're going to have that failure. But realistically, we uh, look at replacing these things in five years. So if we were, for whatever reason, we're going to have a, a PC or server that was going to stay out in, in production longer than that period of time, we really like to replace at least the hard drives within that machine at that point because we know that the failure rate is going to be pretty high. All right, so well, uh, this is a hard drive from a laptop. It's a lot smaller, obviously, but it still is the basic same device. It's got, you can tell it's got a little hub here and it spins platters. Mm -hmm. So this fails as well. If for some reason, all the data that is on, on my little hard drive here on my laptop, mm -hmm. if this thing fails uh, and I don't have a backup, right. you run into this situation a lot where people come in and go, man, my computer won't boot up, right. uh, I open it up and it won't recognize the hard mm -hmm. drive anymore. Is there any way to get all the information that's on this thing out? Maybe. And so a couple things can happen. One is, is uh, depending on how sensitive that information is and how important it is. Um, and, and you go to an uh, individual example would be your photographs. Most of us don't keep uh, photographs uh, in the photo format any longer, uh, you know, hard print pictures. Uh, most of it's digital. Right. And so you could lose wedding photos, really important photos uh, of, from your children, hmm. uh, whatever it may be. And that may be very, very valuable to you. So what we do is we try to gauge the value of the data. That's the very first thing that we're going to do. And somebody comes in and says, you know, this is really important to me. Uh, I, you know, I, I can't live without it, uh, businesses in particular, um, but, but possibly like wedding photos or something right. like that. Oh, we're not going to touch it if, if the, the hard drive's gone uh, bad. What we're going to do is we're going to send it to a disaster recovery specialist. It's going to cost between $1,500 and $5,000 or more wow. to get that information back, and it's still not guaranteed. Although the guys that we work with are really good, and um, we, they've never failed us yet as to being able to get stuff off of crazy you know, crazy situations. Yeah. Uh, where they basically have to take this thing apart they and use apart. the disc and rebuild it from scratch. They, yeah, they have special high-end equipment where they can actually take the platter out of that hard drive, put it into this special equipment, and read it, um, and then reconstruct the data. And, and there's still no guarantee, though, because no guarantees. It, it could have been corrupted because you set it down next to something with a right. big magnet. Right. And they're still going to charge. Right. Uh, and so you know, whether they can recover the data or not, you're still going to have to agree to pay the price for that. So you know, if somebody comes and says, it's important, but it's not important enough that I can spend $1,500 or $5,000, we'll get permission from them. And there's some things we can actually do here. We've got some pretty advanced uh, programs and equipment ourselves uh, that uh, we can do destructive recoveries. And uh, one example of that is uh, what we call a drop test. And so drop test, do not do this at all. <laughs> but a drop test... Even that sounds terrifying. Yeah. So, so what happens a lot of times is is that the hard drive uh, has a, a head that reads the magnetic right. media and so the tone arm of a turntable. Yeah, and yeah. it gets it'll get stuck. It'll right. actually dive into the platter and it etches a little piece out. And what we need to do is to get that head free up, and it'll a lot of times bounce back to where it's supposed to be, and then we can read everything except for where that indention is. It will not last long, but it, it, we, we oftentimes can get it back. And so what, to do that, what you do is you, you stick the hard drive up um, vertically and with perfect precision, you slam it down onto a hard surface 
Um, mm -hmm. It has to hit it at all four corners pretty much at the same time so that you know we're not jarring it. Uh, we, we've got to get it just perfect. Uh, and that will free up the head. I now, disaster recovery, I know that you went to a seminar. In fact, you went this past week to, right. to a special seminar uh, out west, and, and, and it specifically talked about uh, disaster recovery and gave you guys some, some ideas of, mm -hmm. of ways to do that. What kind of new things are there in that field? So we spent three days um, talking and learning uh, about state-of-the-art uh, information in regards to the data recovery side of backup uh, and restore. Data recovery is the, the idea that um, sometimes it's known as, as business continuity as well. Uh, what we want to do is we want to get a business back up and running in as minimal amount of time as possible. So uh, a lot of businesses, when we start really looking at it, it can cost them $10,000 an hour or wow. more to be down. And that's how dependent they are on their information systems. And so in regards to when we start kind of calculating that um, real cost, uh, they need to have systems that can be back up in place. Now, normal backup mechanisms can be four hours, eight hours, you know, um, one or two days, um, even in, in recover, you know, full recovery time. So we have uh, devices uh, that will actually now uh, do backups on an hourly basis. They do incremental backups on an hourly basis, so none of your data is ever an hour old or not, uh, or more than an hour old. Uh, but if there is a disaster, so say a server fails, there's a fire, uh, um, whatever happens, we actually can virtualize that server on this backup recovery device and hmm. we're back up and running in a matter of minutes. Um, literally, they're at site. Now, in the event of a, a, a major disaster tornado uh, comes through, wipes out everything, including that backup device, nightly what we do is we go in and we send all of that information to a data center and we are then able to virtualize in that data center. That's going to take us a little longer, maybe two hours or so to, to recover. Uh, in that data center, or, or perhaps even less than that, kind of depends on, on what we've done in prep work. But that's pretty amazing yeah. technology to be able to, to keep a business up and running. So if you look at banks, doctors' offices, uh, people like that, that are very, very dependent, and that we as a, a community are very dependent on, it's great to know that they have that kind of capability yeah. to recover their systems that fast. And when you say go in, you don't physically go into their, to their business. It's all done remotely. Yeah, we do almost everything remotely yeah. nowadays. And, and in fact, we have clients all over the country. Um, in fact, we have even an international client now as a result of, of this remote technology. But yes, we put a physical device there at their location, and then we monitor that remotely, manage it remotely, and then are able to do the, the nighttime uh, backup of all of the data mm -hmm. to a data center that's um, up north. All right, so a quick primer on what we've been talking about. Number one, backup, backup, multiple backups. Absolutely. It seems like every show that we do, that's one thing we always talk about I, is backup. I'm an advocate. Uh, either on a, an, uh, an external hard drive uh, or an online site mm -hmm. or something, but just have, especially you need to have a backup that's offsite. You need to have a backup and you need to verify that it works. And that's what happens a lot of times. I could not tell you the number of times where we go and talk with people and say, you know, are you doing backups? Yes, I am. And then we actually check and, and they're actually not doing backups. They think they are. Yeah. We've had where people were still using tape and they would put the tape in, but they never actually hit the button to tell it to do the backup. Wow. And so they were trading tapes out for, I, I heard one instance, uh, it was six years that somebody had been putting a tape into the system and never had actually started the backup process. All right, uh, number two, this little dohickey right here, the hard drive, it is going to fail at some point. There's no question about that. If, you, if your computer is at least five years old and it has not failed, you immediately need to take your computer somewhere, whether it's biotech or whatever, and get a backup made and possibly even get the hard drive replaced sure. if you want to yeah. keep on using it. Uh, and, and these days, these things are very, very inexpensive. Uh, so it's not a big uh, expense to have the hard drive replaced and everything that's on the old one can be put on the new one in mm -hmm. really a very short period of time. So right. back up, make sure if your devices are old that you mm -hmm. check the hard drive. Uh, you can do a diagnostic to make sure it's still working, get it replaced or get it backed up. And then if something, uh, heaven forbid, does happen and you have to have data, come to the folks of Biotech because they're experts at disaster recovery. Absolutely. All right. Now, we, of course, uh, will provide you a lot more information on the website that you're looking at right now. You can see more videos about uh, what's going on at Biotech at uh, Biotech.com. Hey, thanks for watching Mainframe here on Biotech.com.